myself with uh, many of the items that the senator from Vermont mentioned, and I actually did them in our state. We raised the minimum wage, passed the living wage, invested more in infrastructure, went four years in a row without a penny's increase for college tuition. But there's another piece that Senator Sanders left out tonight, but he's been excellent about underscoring that. And that is that we need to separate the casino, speculative, mega bank gambling that we have to insure with our money from the commercial banking, namely reinstating Glass-Steagall. Secretary Clinton mentioned my support eight years ago. And Secretary, I was proud to support you eight years ago, but something happened in between. And that is, Anderson, a Wall Street crash that wiped out millions of jobs and millions in sa of savings for families. And we are still just as vulnerable, Paul Volcker says today. We need to reinstate Glass-Steagall, and that's a huge difference on this stage I, I, among I, us as candidates. I, I do just for viewers at home who may not be reading up on this, Glass-Steagall's de Depression-era banking laws repealed in 1999 and prevented commercial banks from engaging in investment banking and insurance activities. Secretary Clinton, I mean, he raises a fundamental difference on this stage. Senator Sanders wants to break up the big Wall Street banks. You don't. You say charge the banks more, continue to monitor them. Why is your plan better? Well, my plan is more comprehensive, and frankly, it's tougher because, of course, we have to deal with the problem that the banks are still too big to fail. We can never let the American taxpayer and middle class families ever have to bail out the kind of speculative behavior that we saw. But we also have to worry about some of the other players. AIG, a big insurance company, Lehman Brothers, an investment bank. There's this whole area called shadow banking. That's where the experts tell me the next potential problem could come from. So I'm with both Senator Sanders and Governor O'Malley Actually, in putting not. a lot of attention onto the banks. And the plan that I have put forward would actually empower regulators to break up big banks if we thought they posed a risk. But I want to make sure we're going to cover everybody, not what caused the problem last time, but what could cause it next Senator time. Senator Sanders, Secretary Clinton just said that her policy is tougher than yours. Well, that's not true. Uh, <laughs> why? Let us be clear that the greed and recklessness and illegal behavior of Wall Street, where fraud is a business model, helped to destroy this economy and the lives of millions of people. Check the record. In the 1990s, and all due respect, in the 1990s, when I had the Republican leadership and Wall Street spending billions of dollars in lobbying, when the Clinton administration when Alan Greenspan said, what a great idea it would be to allow these huge banks to merge, Bernie Sanders fought them and helped lead the opposition to deregulation. Today, it is my view that when you have the three largest banks in America are much bigger than they were when we bailed them out for being too big to fail, we have got to break them up. Secretary Clinton, you have to be able to respond. Yeah. He brought you up. You know, I, I respect the passion and intensity I represented Wall Street as a senator from New York, and I went to Wall Street in December of 2007, before the big crash that we had, and I basically said, cut it out. Quit foreclosing on homes. Quit engaging in these kinds of speculative behaviors. I took on the Bush administration for the same thing. So I have thought deeply and long about what we're going to do to do exactly what I think both the senator and the governor want, which is to rein in and stop this risk. And my plan would have the potential of actually sending the executives to jail. Nobody went to jail after $100 billion in fines were paid and would give regulators the authority to go after the big banks. Thank but you. I'm telling Thank you, you I'll say it tonight. Uh, if view, only you look at the big banks, you may be missing the forest for the trees. Senator We've Senator got to look at to be able all to the other financial respond. institutions. In my yes, view, say you do not. I will get you a second. Okay. Thank you. I'll tell him. In my view, Secretary Clinton, you do not, Congress does not regulate Wall Street. Wall Street regulates Congress. And we have got to break off these banks. Going to them so, and saying, please do the right thing no, that's is not what, kind of that, naive. Look, I think Dodd-Frank was a very that. good start. And I think that we have to implement it. We have to prevent the Republicans from ripping it apart. We have to save the Consumer Financial Protection Board, which is finally beginning to act to protect consumers. We have work to do. You've got no argument from me. But I know if we don't come in with a very tough and comprehensive approach like the plan I'm recommending, 
We're going to be behind instead of ahead Governor of what Malley? the next crisis could be. Anderson, look, this is uh, the big banks. I mean, once we repealed Glass-Steagall back in the late 1999s, the big banks, the six of them, went from controlling with the equivalent of 15 percent of our GDP to now 65 percent of our GDP. And uh, <coughs> right before this debate, Secretary Clinton's campaign put out a lot of reversals on positions on Keystone and many other things. But one of them that we still have a great difference on, Madam Secretary, is that you are not for Glass-Steagall. You are not for putting a firewall between this speculative, risky, shadow banking behavior. I am, and the people of our country need a president who's on their side, willing to protect the Main Street economy from recklessness on Wall Street. We have to Secretary fulfill Clinton, our promise. I have to let you respond. Well, you know, Everybody on this stage has changed a position or two. We've been around a cumulative quite some period of time. Um, you know, we know that if you are learning, you're going to change your position. I never took a position on Keystone until I took a position on Keystone. But I have been on the forefront of dealing with climate change starting in 2009 when President Obama and I crashed a meeting with the Chinese and got them to sign up to the first international agreement to combat climate change that they'd ever joined. So Thank I'm you. not taking a backseat to anybody on my Thank values, my principles, and the results that I get. Senator Sanders, <laughs> Senator Sanders, in 2008, congressional leaders were told without the 2008 bailout, the U.S. was possibly days away from a complete meltdown. Despite that, you still voted against it. As president, would you stand by your principles if it risked the country's financial stability? Well, I remember that meeting very well. I remember it like it was yesterday. Hank Paulson, Bernanke came in and they said, guys, the economy is going to collapse because Wall Street is going under. It's going to take the economy with them. And you know what I said to Hank Paulson? I said, Hank, your guys, you come from Goldman Sachs, your millionaire and billionaire friends caused this problem. How about your millionaire and billionaire fans paying for the bailout? Here's not here. working families in this country. So to answer your question, no, I would not have let the economy collapse. But it was wrong to ask the middle class to bail out Wall Street. And by the way, I want Wall Street now to help kids in this country go to college, public colleges and universities free with a Wall Street speculation. We're going to talk about that in a minute. But Senator Webb, I want to get you And You have said neither party has the guts to take on Wall Street. Is the system rigged? There is a reality that I think we all need to recognize with respect to the power of the financial sector. And let me just go back a minute and say that on this TARP program, um, I introduced a piece of legislation calling for a windfall profits tax on the executives of any of these companies that got more than $5 billion, that it was time for them, once they got their, their compensation and their bonus, to split the rest of the money they made with the, the nurses and the truck drivers and the soldiers uh, who bailed them out. Um, with respect to the financial sector, I mean, I know that my time's run out, but I mean, I, in speaking of changing positions and the positions on how this debate occurred, it's kind of frustrating because unless somebody mentions my name, I can't get into the discussion. You agree to these uh, rules and you're uh, wasting time. So well, if you would finish your right, answer, well, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm trying to set a mark here so maybe we can get into a little more later on. This hasn't been equal equal time. Um, but if you want to look at what's happened, if we look at the facts in terms of how we're going to deal with this, since that crash, in the last 10 years, the amount of the world's capital economy that Wall Street manages has gone from 44 percent to 55 percent. That means the Wall Street money managers are not risking themselves as the same way the American people are when they're going to get their compensation. They're managing money from all over the world. Thank you. We have to take that into consideration when we're looking at uh, ways to regulate it. Governor Chafee, you've attacked Secretary Clinton for being too close to Wall Street banks. In 1999, you voted for the very bill that made banks bigger. Uh, the glass seagull was my very first vote. I just arrived. My dad had died in office. I was appointed to the office. It was my are very you saying, first vote. Are you saying you didn't know what you were voting for? I just arrived the Senate. Uh, I think we'd get some takeovers. And that was one. It was my very first vote. And it was 95, 90, 92 5. It was the, the record. With, with all due respect, let me just sir, say, what does that say about you that you're casting a vote for something you weren't really sure about? I think you're being a little rough. I just arrived at the United States Senate. I'd been mayor of my city. My dad had died. I'd been appointed by the governor. It was the first vote, and it was 90 to 5 because it was a conference report. But let me just say about income inequality. We've had a lot of talk over the last few minutes, hours, or tens of minutes, but no one's saying how we're going to fix it. 
And it all started with the Bush tax cuts that favored the wealthy. So let's go back to the tax code. And 0.6% of Americans are at the top echelon, over 464,000. 0.6 of Americans, that's less than 1%, but they generate 30% of the revenue. Thank you, and Governor. they're doing fine, so there's still a lot more money to be had from this top echelon. I'm saying let's have another tier and put that uh, back into the tax bracket, and that'll generate $42 billion. Bring and in then Dan we Bass. can help uh, the middle class and hard-working America, hard okay. Americans. Thank you. CNN visited college campuses along with Facebook, and not surprisingly, college affordability was among the most pressing issues. Senator Sanders, you've mentioned a couple of times you do have a plan to make public colleges free for everyone. Secretary Clinton has criticized that in saying she's not in favor of making a college free for Donald Trump's kids. Do you think taxpayers should pick up the tab for wealthy children? Well, let me tell you, Donald Trump and his billionaire friends on the my policies are going to pay a hell of a lot more in taxes today. Taxes in the future that they're paying today. But in terms of education, this is what I think. This is the year 2015. A college degree today, Dana, is the equivalent of what a high school degree was 50 years ago. And what we said 50 years ago and 100 years ago is that every kid in this country should be able to get a high school education regardless of the income of their family. I think we have to say that is true for everybody going to college. I think we don't need a complicated system which the secretary is talking about, your income goes up, your income is down, if you're poor you have to work, and so forth and so on. I pay for my program, by the way, through a tax on Wall Street speculation, which will not only make public colleges and universities tuition free, it will substantially lower interest rates on college debt, a major crisis in this country. And, and secretary, secretary Clinton, it's not just college tuition. Senator Sanders is talking about expanding Social Security and giving all Americans Medicare. What's wrong with that? Well, let me address uh, college affordability I because I have a, a, a plan that I think will really um, zero in on what the problems are. First, all the 40 million Americans who currently have student debt will be able to refinance their debt to a low interest rate. That will save thousands of dollars for people who are now struggling under this cumbersome, burdensome uh, college debt. As a young student in Nevada said to me, the hardest thing about going to college should not be paying for it. So then we have to make it more affordable. How do we make it more affordable? My plan would enable anyone to go to a public college or university tuition free. You would not have to borrow money for tuition. But I do believe, and maybe it's because I worked when I went through college, I worked when I went through law school, I think it's important for everybody to have some part of getting this accomplished. That's why I call it a compact. Secretary so, yes, Clinton. I would like students to work 10 hours a week Can you answer in the order to make it possible for them to afford their education. And I want colleges to get their costs down. They are outrageously high Secretary in what Clinton, they're charging. The question was not just about tuition, though. It was about... Senators, uh, Senator Sanders' plan to expand Social Security, to make Medicare available to all Americans. Is that something that you would support? And if not, why not? Well, I, I fully support Social Security, and the most important fight we're going to have is defending it against continuing Republican efforts you want to, to privatize expand it? it. I want to enhance the benefits for the poorest recipients of Social Security. We have a lot of women on Social Security, particularly widowed and single women who didn't make a lot of money during their careers, and they are impoverished, and they need more help from the Social Security system. Jenny. And I will, focus, I will focus on helping those people who need it the most. And of course, I'm going to defend Social Security. I'm going to look for ways to try to make sure it's solvent into the future. Um, and we, we also need to talk about health care at some time, Senator because Sanders, we agree Republican, on the goals, we just the disagree Republicans on the means. in the Congress, and some Democrats, were talking about cutting Social Security and benefits for disabled veterans through the so-called chain CPI, I founded a caucus called the Defending Social Security Caucus. My view is that when you have millions of seniors in this country trying to get by, and I don't know how they do, on eleven, twelve, thirteen thousand dollars a year. You don't cut Social Security, you expand it. And the way you expand it is by lifting the cap on taxable incomes 
so that you do away with the absurdity of a millionaire paying the same amount into the system as somebody making $118,000. You do that, Social Security is solvent until 